Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us is Hamilton Reiner, Portfolio Manager and Head of U.S. Equity Derivatives at J.P. Morgan Asset Management to discuss an outcome-oriented ETF strategy that solves for risk, return, and income all in one wrapper. It is great to see you, Hamilton. Welcome to Trade Talks. Oh, thanks for having me, Jill. Really appreciate it. You got it. And given what we are seeing with inflation right now, why is income so important and how are the two of them intertwined? Absolutely. So when you think about income, Jill, it's something that is always an important part of clients' portfolios. It never goes out of style. And so given the inflationary environment, duration is a pretty scary asset right now, as is, you know, credit spread risk. And when you think about credit spread risk and duration, you know, many advisors, many investors, it's really creating a headache for them, if you will. And if you could find a way to generate income and do it in a way that does not involve duration or credit spread risk, it really is an attractive outcome for our clients to allocate some assets. And congratulations on the recent launch of the ETF, JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF, ticker JEPQ. Tell me about the strategy and how you manage your fund. I know you look for higher quality, lower volatility companies, but you do it with an options overlay. Covered call overwriting is nothing new. So what are you doing that's unique here? Absolutely. So when we think about covered call uh, strategies, you're right, they're nothing new. I've been investing in equity and equity option strategies for over three decades, and it was going on at least two decades before I even uh, joined the industry. But when we think about call overriding, it's about a trade-off. Life's about trade-offs. It's about giving up some of the upside in return for income, get, you know, knowing that you may not make everything to the upside, but you can get something that's really hard to find in this market environment, which is an above average level of income. And so when we think about the, uh, the strategy, our goal is very much as to why the word NASDAQ is in the name of the strategy. There are a lot of wonderful names in the NASDAQ 100, and our goal is to own those that we find the most attractive in the NASDAQ 100, and then on top of that, generate some income by selling some NASDAQ uh, index options as an overlay. And so the strategy, when you think about an outcome, you're going to get some of the dividends of, uh, associated with your long portfolio. You're going to get the options premium of the income option of the index options that you're selling, and you will get some of the upside. One of the things philosophically I firmly believe in is you want to actually have a combination of upside as well as some income. We don't think that selling all the upside away is really a best in class way from an outcome perspective. And what has brought you success with the strategy? Excuse me? What has brought you success? With, with I, think, the- I, I think what's brought us success is, is a couple things. One, um, income is, is, is hard to find, and yet, you know, whether you're you know, in the middle of your retirement, in your retirement, or post, income is really a big part of clients' portfolios. Number two, you want total return. And if we can give you a total return that's also quite attractive, but with lower volatility and lower beta, I think that is the recipe for success for any strategy, that if you could solve for something that it's tough to solve for and give it to them in a total return uh, environment. So income plus total return, we think is a really good outcome for for investors. What types of investors do you think might be interested in JEPQ? Are investors buying this for an equity allocation or because of the attractive yield? I think it's actually both, because we think that you can break apart our investors in a couple, di- couple, a couple different categories. One, you have somebody that wants to own uh, the, you know, a NASDAQ-oriented portfolio, but do it in a more defensive manner. Our strategy is going to have uh, less volatility and less beta than the underlying index, because the options actually not only generate income for us, but they also lower volatility and beta over time. The second, so if you want income, you know, an above average level of income is quite attractive with using a strategy like JEPIC or JEPQ. But at the same time, there are many people like myself that also don't need income yet. I still believe I'm young enough that I don't need income. And as such, I still own my strategy. And why? Because I like the total return profile. I like the idea of getting some dividends. I like the idea of getting some of the upside. I like the idea of getting the options premium. And I like the idea of having a more conservative or moderate approach with less volatility and less beta. And we can see you're at the NASDAQ market site today celebrating the launch of JEPIC. And of course, it's JP Morgan's asset management's first strategy to list on NASDAQ. What does that mean for you as a portfolio manager? NASDAQ is a great brand. And I think JP Morgan is a great brand. And combining those two is epic, or in this case, JEPIC. So when I think about the combination of our two wonderful franchises, you know, I'm more than excited to partner with, uh, with the folks at NASDAQ on this new exciting strategy. All right, Hamilton, congratulations on the launch and thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thanks for having us, Jill.